Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. That's Alex. Yeah, and we're here for another. Uh, Jamie, I'm picking my nose. No, I keep somehow. I have an itchy nose. Uh, uh, have you ever noticed that I have an itchy nose? I'm o- always going like that, uh, and it's like I like some hairs are inside out, and I get one of those things to cut them with, but never works. Anyway, uh, listen, uh, we're going to have a citizens panel. We're going to try and get a citizens panel together uh, in about oh, 30 minutes from right now, but uh, we got some fun with an old friend of ours. Uh, what, what, do you, what, do you, what are you doing? You're just moving all around. That's Will Durst, ladies and gentlemen. You're moving around, Will. I am. Uh, you are, yeah. I'm getting my, getting my, you know, my lens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We actually, we woke him up, I think. Didn't we? You, uh, you not think, indeed. Wow. Usually yeah. you make it. We do this early in the day. We do this around noon my time, which is nine your time. And I always figure, gee, nine your time. Why do you do that? You're a comedian. You're usually up till two, three in the morning, right? Yeah, last night, about two. So I got uh, six hours sleep. You know, Really? That's, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, but... Uh, uh, I so I always wonder why you make it this early. I would think a comedian would say. I, I know that when I do Stephen Pearl, he wants to do it at two at two o'clock in the afternoon my time, you know. And Bubbles is good. He wants it around one o'clock my time. But you say no, nine o'clock my your time, my, yeah, uh, yeah. noon my time. Uh, that's I fine. I got got up at eight, but I just forgot. And I've been wandering around for an hour. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, anyway, this is Will Durst, ladies and gentlemen, well-known uh, uh, political uh. Uh, pundit. Nah. Hey, <clears throat> this is interesting. I'm involved in a little project right now. Yeah. And the project is to catalog all of Pat Johnson's comedy photos. Because, you know, he was a rock and roll photographer. Did, did and he, he die? Was also, did he die? He got in early on the comedy thing. Yeah, but did he and, di- Did he die? And, did he die? Huh? Did he die? No, no, no. Oh, He's, oh, uh, oh. He just wants to put a book together. Oh, I see. Okay, I, because you and you said we're we're cataloging his works. It's like, oh, the guy dropped dead, and now somebody's yeah. got, you know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, healthy, alive. Just had lunch with him the other day. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and uh, we came across a great shot of you. Really. So I'm gonna be writing some stuff. Uh-huh. And, uh, want to talk to you about the 80s uh, comedy in San Francisco. Yeah. Oop. Maybe it's a gig. No. no. <laughs> it, it, it's probably a robocall, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, you look at your phone and uh, you try to recognize the number. If you don't recognize the number now, you just decline. So the picture you found of me, was it good? Yeah, it's the one of you in the hat with the the heavy contrast. Oh, really? Did I have dark glasses on at the time? Yeah, I can't remember. I got it. I got it on my computer. See, there was a period of time when I first started in San Francisco where I didn't want anybody. I felt that the magic of radio was you imagined who the people were on the air. Right, right. Uh, oh, when you finally saw them in real life, you were always very disappointed. You know, some oh, guy who you mentioned to be handsome and debutant, you know, debonair and whatever. Uh, uh, it turned out to be this big, fat, ugly guy with pimples on his face. You know, so I didn't. F- I felt the magic of radio was that you you imagine what these people look like. So when they finally wanted to take pictures of me. I wore the hat and dark glasses, so you really couldn't figure out what I looked like. And so I did that for a while, and then one day I just said, "I'm sick of this," you know. <laughs> you know, it, it, I was—it it was that I was playing to my prejudice as a kid who was brought up on radio. Yeah. 
you know, and that I didn't want to see what those people look like. Every time I saw what those people looked like, it was a disappointment. And you looked at the picture and stared at it for hours going, how could that voice come out of that guy? You know, and then occasionally I would meet up with one of them and sure, it all fit the minute he opened his mouth. But up until that point, it was just a fat fuck, you know. So that's the reason for the glasses and the hat. Yeah, it was it was a great shot, and you used it for years as your, uh, yeah, as your you know traveling card, as your headshot. Uh, it's amazing how many of Pat Johnson's, uh, even though I wasn't privy to the photo shoots, but I've seen that work all over clubs all over America. Yeah. So Gonzo's, the one at the pinball machine, that was yeah. that was his standard eight by ten for five ten years. Yeah. And then. A lot of times, comics calcified, and they left the business, or they got into other stuff. So that eight by ten, that that iconic shot, is the one that lasts. That's the one that's still in clubs. They never updated it. Right. So Dom Herrera still looks thin and young. Yeah. 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 You never age. It's kind of like you know what? I, do you remember this? Uh, Somebody it, was just in London, and they told me that my my headshot from 1989. Is in the the comedy store uh, on Piccadilly uh, uh, Circus in in London. Yeah, you know, eighty nine. Yeah, thirty years ago. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, what I'm thinking of is that maybe the, I don't know. If Pat Johnson did the photos of me for Channel Forty Four. That's what I don't know. Uh, but the best one that was uh, I ever had was the one where I was kind of smirking, had my finger raised, and everything. That one I used for years. Uh, for years. Uh. Now I can't take a good one. I keep trying to do selfies and, and take a good one, and every picture I do just looks grizzled, you know. Uh, yeah, you're grizzled. Yeah. yeah. And I've got, I've got, uh, I've got uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, pollen today in my eye. So please excuse oh, me Jesus. if I wipe my eye occasionally. No, but anyway, right so that sounds good. And you're also, you should plug uh, the San Francisco. So I'm going to talk about... How San Francisco yeah. was always kind of a, a a magnet, a mecca for comedy in the fifties. You know, all the the hip smoke a reefer comics uh, worked here, and in the the sixties, uh, you know, it was the last in the early sixties. Of course, the sixties died in sixty three when Kennedy was assassinated. Now, even though D Letty didn't die till sixty six, yeah. But then. Um, Cheech and Chong worked here, and and Joan Rivers and Phyllis Diller, and you know that whole crowd. Phyllis Mother's Diller, brothers. by the way, Phyllis Diller, for your information, actually, uh, I think is from San Francisco. Yes, or was from San Francisco. Yes, and was the music librarian at KSFO. Oh no, kidding! Yes, yes. Huh. That's but, it. No, and then in the seventies. Just about every album recorded, comedy album recorded in the seventies, was recorded at the boarding house. Yeah, which, which is interesting. Which is now Cobb's, right? No, boarding house was on Bush. It was owned by David Allen. Oh, okay. Uh, I came here in seventy nine, and I got to work the boarding house maybe twice or three times, and then it closed, and then it was sold for condos. No, oh, okay. Well, then I guess I'm wrong. I thought I thought uh, no, the Waldorf. No, no, that was that was uh, Cobb's was the Waldorf. The Blue Note Blue? at one time. Yeah, and then when Wolfgang's moved from Wolfgang. next to the Punchline, that's that's where it was. Okay, all right. Just trying to get that all straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no. So but, I have to write a little piece about the fifties, the sixties, the seventies. And then the 80s and 90s when Pat was uh, active in comedy. And he's got everybody. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, yeah. the thing about the 50s, I mean, I grew up in the 50s with comedy in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. And what you had is you had uh, The Hungry Eye yeah. and you had Ann's 440. And these two clubs, they, they didn't necessarily, they weren't comedy clubs. What they were was they were... I, would you call them ver nightclubs? And they would bring in a lead act. And sometimes the lead act was Mel Torme, but another time would be Professor Irwin Corey. And the people who played regularly in San Francisco, Smothers Brothers, Irwin Corey, uh, um, 
uh, Lenny Bruce, of course, uh, and we could go on and on. I mean, as Shelley Berman, they all played San Francisco. Uh, they mostly the Hungry Eye. Uh, Anne's 440 was a little, a little more edgy. Okay, so Lenny would like play Anne's 440. Okay. And, and what the, was the Purple Onion? The Purple Onion was, uh, oh, that was another one, yes. Uh, the, uh, the Purple Onion was yet another one, yeah. I, don't, I can't, I'm trying to remember where it was exactly. So it was those major three clubs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and between them, they booked almost every, and Bob Newhart would play there. I mean, on and on and on and on and on. Uh, but these people would come in from out of town and play those places. It wasn't like the comedians were developed at those places. Right, but then guys like Ronnie Shell would, would act as the middle act. Yes. Either. Or as he was once referred to as the world's slowest rising young comedian. <laughs> but uh, those were those were good days back in the he 50s. He got famous on... Hey, Mort Saul, we forgot Mort Saul. So? Yeah. And he got famous, uh, Ronnie Shell got famous as being part of the Don Sherwood show. Yes, and then he got famous later on because he was, I believe, in Gomer Pyle. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was his. He got real famous. That's after he moved to L.A. I'm talking about when he was still here. Yeah. Did you listen to Don Sherwood? Don Sherwood was the guy who influenced everything I do, practically. Wow. Yeah. Oh no, I was. Uh, I listened to him every day. I said, "That's what I want to be. I want to be Don Sherwood." Uh, and uh, once I wrote Sherwood, and this was a morning show guy, by the way, in San Francisco, who owned the fucking town. I mean, he owned it. Um, and did a morning show, and uh, I would just, like everybody else, I was entranced by him, and so I wrote him, and I said, can I come watch your show? And one, we said, sure, and one morning I went down and sat down in the studio with him while he did his show. And he was very nice to me, you know. Uh, I thought that was a very nice gesture for some just little kid who was growing up over in Marin, wanted to be a. How old were you in high school? Must have been. I must have been sixteen or seventeen at the time. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So you knew radio from the start, right? Oh yeah. Well, I knew radio from the start because my father was on it with orchestras, and so we would always listen to the radio for that. And I, I grew up. I, I was one of those kids that kind of grew up on the cusp of new radio and old radio. I grew up listening to dramas, comedy shows, Jack Benny, Eddie Cantor, all those radio shows, right? Bing Crosby. Uh, and uh, then, all of a sudden, it's changed, right? And radio had to figure out how it was going to compete against television, and it wasn't going to be doing dramas and comedy shows, okay? So it started playing music. And we got our first Top 40 station in San Francisco. It was K-O-B-Y, Kobe. And uh, that was a top 40 station. And somebody said, did you hear this radio station? They're playing the same 40 songs over and over again. I said, what kind of a format is that? Top 40. Yeah, well, it worked. Yeah. What year was that? That was, uh, God, I guess I was in high school, maybe 53, somewhere around in there. And, that, and that's when the music really started changing, right? 53? Uh, that's when it had a different outlet, you know. That's when it started going rock and roll because rock and roll got played on these stations. Um, but you got to remember, Top 40 in those days wasn't just rock and roll. You no. could have... Uh, Dean, uh, Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, and, Peg and, Lee. And Fats Domino, you know, Mont and Mont Elvis Vani. Presley. Yeah. yeah. No, Montevani never made the Top 40, but... <laughs> Uh, Montevani was one of those. My father used to refer to that mu music as pancake music, flapjack music, because he used to play a radio show where they used to play that kind of like mood music stuff, right? And uh, that mood music stuff, and um, it was called the Albers Flapjack Hour. Uh, pancake and music. And so he would call it flapjack music. <laughs> uh but no, but the top 40 was a mixture of everybody. You know, it yeah, wasn't, yeah. if it was selling and it was a top record, it got on the top 40. So Frank Sinatra would be there right next to Elvis Presley. You know, but that that's when radio changed. So I came out of those two things. I was born into traditional, you know, magic of the mind radio, right? And then I 
became, came into the world of Top 40, of which I then embraced as what I was going to do for a living. But I was also going. I also wanted to be a morning show, and I also wanted to. I wanted to be Don Sherwood. Yeah. Look. And he he had comics on. He would have various characters, right? They were characters. Well, he did characters. Ah. Yeah, he did characters. But he would have a lot of different comics on. I mean, he liked comics, and he would have them in. Uh, but the star of the show, no, no matter what, was was Sherwood. Sherwood was funny. He was engrossing, you know. And um, and you were always nervous whether he would show up. Oh, sometimes he didn't show up. Right. He always had uh, he always had a, a sidekick who would take over the show if he didn't show up because he had a hangover or whatever, you know. Uh, and so, it, in fact, when he first started out in San Francisco, he had an afternoon show and he had a morning show, and the morning show was called Where's Sherwood? (laughs) Uh, But I can't begin to tell people how uh, uh, big that man was in San Francisco. Um, Everybody listened to Don Sherwood. You know, anybody who tried to go up against him was fighting a lost cause. So, it, and and what happened? Why why did he leave radio? Um, times change. You know, years pass. They made him at one point. He became the program director of KSFO and almost ruined the place. Uh, and his reputation started to wane. You know, um, and it, it had a very sad ending. He, he died of uh, I think of lung cancer. And uh, there's a story about the last night that he was alive. He had his limousine driver drive him all around San Francisco to see the city he loved one more time. (laughs) You know, I figured, what a great movie that would make. You know. Um, And uh, he, he, you know, after after he died, I mean, then I came into San Francisco and and had a, a hit morning show. And I felt I had accomplished... Not what Sherwood had accomplished, because it was so pervasive that, you know, nobody could be that big. But they at least in some measure uh, had uh, had done what he did. And Man, and, you, and his ex- You don't realize yeah. the mark that you left on this city. I mean, everywhere I go, every gig I do, because what happened was my audience aged out at comedy clubs. And then they had kids, and now their kids are all grown, so they're coming back to see me in theaters. So I still have that that target demographic yeah. in the Bay Area that I had in comedy clubs. So people are always coming up to me afterwards saying, oh, man, the Quake used to listen to you. We, that, that was religion for us. And I, that somebody actually said that the other day. That show was religion. It was because there were so many fewer... You know, distractions. There were so many fewer media outlets, pieces of, of, uh, 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 you know, trying to get your attention. It, it, it was much simpler, and it was purer. Uh, you know, in it, terms it, of it, it, energy. We will, was, we will never, we will never see that again. And the reason no. we won't is number one, the number one competitor for uh, radio stations are podcasts, and when it comes to podcasts, there are hundreds of thousands of them mm-hmm. uh, you know um, I don't get a huge audience at all but I'll bet compared to some people they'd love to have the audience I've got with this little thing you know so we're never going to see that again we, we do see people pop up as having a hit podcast and then they're the podcast du jour for this week and then the next week it's another one but uh you know, I, we're never going to see the kind of radio that I did. People say, you should come back to San Francisco. We need that. Yeah, well, you need that. But if I did it, nobody would give a shit. No, nobody would listen. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, a, it was a time, you know. It was... It was zeitgeist. It was... It was. was it was it the was. tempo I of mean, the time. I mean, you caught it. Yeah. I mean, you had, the, you had the radio experience. You had the comedy experience. And, and you... And they were both rising. Comedy was 
was filling that gap from for aging rock and rollers who wanted to hear the lyrics and wanted to sit down but still wanted to go out and party. Well, I often said that the reason the Beatles happened when the Beatles happened is because whether it was the Beatles or somebody else, something was going to happen. You well, know? it was also Kennedy dying. Yeah, but I mean, there was something needed at that point, and they yeah. filled that void, okay? Uh, and and my radio show was what it was because the times dictated it. You know, I was product of the times. But I was there at the right time. And my one of the happiest moments of my life is when I heard from Don Sherwood's ex-wife. And she said, you remind me so much of Don. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. And I... Uh, I just I, I I felt that was the compliment I wanted all my life. No other compliment meant as much to me as that. You know, no, I was no Don Sherwood. There's no question about that in my mind. But yeah, but he was no Alex Bennett. Well, he was no Alex Bennett. I mean, you're a product, and you you I mean, you were much more professional. He was he was he was wilder. He was he was rawer. You, you were much more professional. You had done so many years, you know, in different markets. You came here, you knew what you were doing. You were, you know, and you also never had to get the laugh. You were willing for the show to be good. You know, it's no, double that's all that mattered. Anything. That's all that. That's all that mattered. Uh, that, that I would rather the joke be pulled on me than me pull the joke on somebody else. You know, uh, but. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I could be funny in my own right, but I never considered myself a comedian. You know, so I did one time. I did say yes. Uh, are you a comic? And I said no. I'm a radio comic. Just like Jack Benny was a radio comic. He really he was a fairly good stand-up, but his best work was on radio. You know, and I think there there is still a job for radio comic or podcast comic or whatever. You know. But the times have changed, and I'm sitting here getting old, and everybody's forgetting me, and what the fuck? No, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Oh, be oh, when, oh, oh, when I die, they'll put a, you know, Ben Fong Torres will do a column on me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, who knows what they say after you're gone? I would prefer they say it while I'm still here, and I can bask in the glory of it, but... You know, uh, but I'm, I find myself 78 years old, and nobody will hire me because I'm 78 years old, not because of anything else, and um, that uh, grieves me greatly, actually, because I love the business that I'm in. And you're you good know? at it. Yeah, I know. Because yeah. yeah. uh, I'm 66, and you uh, you learn so many tricks, and you get so good, and you're so comfortable, you know, doing what it is that you've done for 40 or more years. Yeah. That you know, it's the whole Malcolm Gladwell ten thousand hours thing. You know, yeah. I mean, you 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 forget about being nervous. You forget about uh, uh, worrying that something is going to happen because you've dealt with everything. So you're just much more comfortable going at it. Yeah. But yeah, well, in the few yeah, minutes we like got, blues artists get better. You know, yeah. because yeah. and it and it seems like you know. It, it means more and it's more authentic because they have it's hard to listen to a 23 year old blues artist you know? well you I wish I wish like a blues artist I could say I'm better better now than I've ever been but that's not the case you know it's not the case you know because I'm not doing radio every day I don't have the chops you know what I'm saying right. it's like I'm out yeah. of practice you know so I yeah I do the podcast but I go from my bedroom to this office and and here we are we're on the air da 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 Big show time. Hey, listen, we we got a little bit of time left. Uh, anything political going on? It's no, it's just uh, chaos uh, day after day. A new bucket of chaos. Yeah. That they throw out to so we don't pay attention to the whole narrative. You know? Yeah. Have you been watching Sasha Baron Cohen's show? No. Oh. Who is America? Yeah. Uh, my wife pissed her pants on one episode. Really? It was that funny? Yeah. 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 And, and, and it it's just he people somehow because he's got all these newer characters, so nobody yeah. sees Borat coming, right? And uh, it, it is it is gut wrenchingly funny at times. At times it misses its mark, but when it hits, it is just 
he and how he gets these people to do these things. I mean, he had this, um, I think, Georgia legislator uh, literally had to resign from office because of what went on on this show where he's yelling out the N-word and pulling his pants down because he's telling them that's how you fight the Islamics, you know. And it's, 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 it's very funny, very funny stuff. The guy's got balls of steel. And what I what I love is uh, the the marketing campaign. They could not announce this in advance, right? For fear of dampening any sort of opening they would have. Oh, Sasha Baron's coming. You know, he's going to have a, a new show. That might be it. No, no, they announced well, well, the my, show my... a week before it started airing, just so he wouldn't. You know. I hate to say this, queer his chances yeah. at getting people to look stupid. Uh, um, my my wife, I call, who, I, who I call girlfriend, said the uh, the reason this show's working now is because he waited like eight years or something since Borat, maybe more, yeah. to do this because he had to let it calm down because once Borat got famous and he got famous, they could see him coming. You know. But... Hey, I want your permission to kill you. To kill me? Yes. Okay, why do you want the... the well, I mean, I don't mind. You know, there's nothing to live for anyway, but... <laughs> and, if, and, if it, and if it makes... No, I'm going to write a mystery novel set in a comedy club. Uh-huh. And I'm going to kill the DJ. And I'm going to kind of mix you and Don Sherwood. You know, you're going to be you're gonna be the guy, but you're evil. You know, you're like... Uh, oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> but it won't be till like, the second or third book. Oh, so I have to wait to be killed off. Yeah. I may be yeah. dead before then. But, yeah, in the in the first book, you're going to be a major character. Oh, I see. Okay. And it's going to be like you, only with many more aspects of Don Sherwood's character, not showing you up, drinking to excess... You know that kind of thing, but it's not you. Now, so have you started? Have, is, have you started writing this? Huh? Have you yeah. Start, have well, you... Um, what I'm doing is I'm writing 600 paragraphs. I write a paragraph a day, mm -hmm. and I figure 600 paragraphs. Each paragraph is about 250 words, so that's uh, 15,000 words. After I get 600, and then I'll just put them in order, and then I'll link them up. Okay, well, that's the easy way of doing it, but don't you ever find that sometimes you start writing and you go, this is good, i got to keep going. Yeah. Well, so you write two uh, or three paragraphs, paragraphs in a day? No, yeah. no, no. I need a plot, and I'm looking for a plot right now. It's going to be called Murder at the Holy City Zoo because Debbie and I still own the name Holy City Zoo, so that way nobody oh, you, will, you, you will got sue the, me. You, <laughs> wait a minute, you got the name the Holy City Zoo? That was one of the major comedy clubs in San Francisco. It was. Yeah, we still own the zoo. Really? Yeah. Is it there? No. 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 We own all the memorabilia and the signs and the trademark. Oh, okay. That's good. And, you know, you should mention before going that you have the Comedy Day celebration coming up in San Francisco, which Debbie is the... Executive director and chief uh, bottle washer. Yeah, she's... Uh, she, we're promoting it. We're looking for money. We need about... Uh, well, we got a GoFundMe uh, thing. Uh, we need ten grand. I think fifteen hundred has been promised, and there, there's a matching grant for fifteen hundred. So we still need seven grand. It's in seven weeks, and uh, noon to five, September sixteenth, the last Sunday of summer, in Golden Gate Park. So where do the they go? The newly named Robin Williams Meadow in Golden Gate really? Park. Really? Was it named because of Comedy Day? Debbie did it all by herself. She wrote the resolution because it was always called Sharon Meadow, but only because it was the meadow next to the Sharon Arts Building. It was never named Sharon Meadow, so they didn't have to change signs or anything. Yeah. So Debbie got it named after Robin Williams, and it was a big deal, and the mayor came and blah, blah. Oh, that's wonderful. So anyway, yeah. so if people want to give uh, to GoFundMe, Go me. what do they do? They just put in... GoFundMe Comedy Day, yeah. GoFundMe, just Comedy Day will get them to it if they, yeah. you go to GoFundMe. And how much does GoFundMe take when you do something like this? Five percent. Five percent? That's not bad. Yeah. But they make it's a, like a credit card. 
they, they make Credit a three yeah. percent, and American Express I think is four. Now, is this the deal where you have to get all ten thousand, otherwise you don't no, no, get it? No, no, that's Kickstarter. No, this go fund me. You get whatever you get. You get whatever you get at the end of so the period. So you set a time. goal, but, but even if you don't make the goal, Kickstarter you got to make the goal, otherwise all the money goes back. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what people do is, you know, they get close to ten grand, they're nine thousand two hundred dollars, and then they put it eight hundred th themselves so that, you know, they get the whole ten grand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Will, great talking to you once Alex again, my Bennett. friend. Uh, you know, we didn't we really didn't talk about politics today, which is your wheelhouse, but unfortunately it's getting all too boring and predictable. Yeah. And I I need to tap your brain about uh, the 80s comedy so when I come to New York in November sure. I'm gonna buy you lunch okay let's hope lunch. let's hope I still have a brain by the time you get here <laughs> yeah, ladies yeah, and me too ladies and gentlemen that's the guy yes will Durst thanks will thank you Alex appreciate it celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before this is Gadnet, the great American broadcast network and that's Will Durst. We love Will. We love Will. We love Will. We love Will. And uh, we will love, love Will and whatever. Anyway, how are you? I'm sitting here. I was trying to fix some problems during that interview. I, well, because it, that was recorded. Uh, why should I lie to you? Uh, even though I made sure I wore the same hat, same shirt, same uh, same overshirt. Uh but now I have a thing here called FileZilla, which uh, takes the programs and puts it on the uh, site. And every now and then, and I have to reboot my machine, it gets frozen at the top of the screen so I can't bring it down. You know how you can move windows around and stuff like that? You can't move this one. It suddenly freezes up. And I have no idea why it does it, but it did it once before, and I cleared it up just by reinstalling it. But that didn't work this time, so... After the show, I must reboot the entire machine. Okay? Anyway, those are just my problems. Uh, listen, uh, I, I got uh, um, a little something to show you here before we, uh, before we get going. You know, we had a, we had a friend come to visit uh, this weekend. Uh, let, me, uh, let me show you the friend, okay? First, uh, this way, okay? Um, let me... See there? There's our friend. Now, uh, that thing you see, that big round orb you see, is the moon. And beside it is, I have no idea, I think it's a reflection of the moon on the window pane or something. I've shot that with my iPhone. But if you then go directly below the moon for a little bit, you see that little red dot? That's Mars. Yes, Mars came to visit. And I was uh, in, in such awe of it that uh, the next a couple of nights, I actually shot it with my webcam and let it go across the... Oh, uh, no, that's, what, that's, what, so what, that's what, excuse me, that's the wrong... Uh, what, what, that's what, the interview. What are you doing? I, that's You're the interview we just all did. Around. Forget it. That's the interview we just did. I don't want that. I want this, okay? I then put... Oh, God. I then put this out there. Now, that doesn't look like much. But if you were to watch it all night long, it moved across. And that is Mars, ladies and gentlemen, from New York City. And it was live at the time, and I was so delighted to have it so. And uh, I just thought I'd, uh, I'd share that with you. Um, I'm going to, uh, while you look at Mars for a second, I'm going to go online here so that people who want to call can call the program. And uh, we can do our, our, our citizens panel. But anyway, that's, that's a goodbye to Mars. See you later, Mars. I love, I love the picture, actually. Uh, this is just, it's like a lot of 2001 or something. But I just, we just, and, and girlfriend and I would just lie there in bed and look out the window while we were lying in bed and just say, you know, Mars is looking down on us. This was really terrific. Just terrific. Anyway. Uh, let me come back to me, and we're ready to go to our citizen panel if anybody chooses to call. If not, I've got so many things to fix, I'll just sign off early. I can do that, but uh, I'll wait here for a couple of minutes and see if anybody decides to, uh, to call. 
the lines are open. Uh, and uh, I'm sure there are a lot of you out there uh, watching us. And if you want to call the program, go to gabnet.net and go over to the right-hand side of the page, and you will see a whole tutorial on how to call us, how to get Skype and download it and put it in your machine and then to use it to call us. Now, as you know, there's going to be a problem at the end of this month coming up, at the end of uh, on September 1st. In that the people at Skype have decided that they're going to change the uh, the system and force us all to go to that new system, and uh, uh, it could be a pain in the ass, but we're, we'll, we'll wait and see. Anyway, hey, look who's here. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, Phil, and uh, we're about to be joined by Scott Boddicker. Oh, there we go. There he is. Hello, Scott. Hey, hey, Alex. Hey, Phil. How you doing? How's the hey. heat? How's the heat down your part neck of the woods? Oh, we're having a cold front again. Very nice today. Only ninety one. Oh wow, wow. It was excellent. Well, I'm spending a fortune actually uh, because I've been keeping the studio cool. I've been keeping the air conditioner on all day long because I've got all this equipment in here and I don't want it overheating. So. Um, uh, I, but we didn't turn on the air conditioner today. The last couple of days, it's been it's been easy enough, you know. So, good. Yeah. How you doing, Phil? I'm doing just fine. Yeah. Uh, it's a, another new week. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday's here, uh, and uh, Gabnet's uh, upon us. Let's see. You know, just like uh, you have Mars in the uh, in the in the photo. Well, yeah. Tuesday it must be Gabnet. Ah, here comes uh, here comes Ray Renati. He's out for his yeah. walk with his dog, as usual. Yeah, as at usual. This time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Don't tell me the show's going to the dogs. Uh, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you if you want it to, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, how how you doing, uh, Ray? Ray. I'm doing okay. You know, uh, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, no? I can hear you. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm, uh, I, I'm having, I had kind of a rough day because I had a, whip, a whiplash in May in a car accident, and yeah. I have this on and off thing. But I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. Wait, you know what happened to me? What I decided to do? What? what who's who's got the sirens? Ray. Oh, I do. They're far away. You can hear them. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, yeah. They're all coming to get you. Okay. Yeah. I hate the show. Wow. I hate the show it. always to be about our medical conditions. And by the way, Scott, you don't have any medical conditions, do you? You're pretty in pretty good shape. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not just, too. just, yeah. Cholesterol. No big cholesterol. deal. He's a youngster. No, well, cholesterol, that's easily taken care of. Yeah. You Jeez. can just uh, take those uh, statins and eat all the butter you want. <laughs> you know? Works for me. Except for Phil, he gets uh, he gets his arteries clogged by pocket lint. You know. <laughs> so. uh, hey, a, a good day for me is uh, I put a, a nitroglycerin pill under my tongue, Jesus. and uh, I feel like a million bucks again. <laughs> really, all wrinkled and green, huh? I see. Yeah. Okay, that's an old joke. Uh, no, I uh, I you know what I did? Uh, I decided to cancel my physical therapy. Why is that? Well, I, I wrote my doctor and I said, I'm bothered by some stuff that's been happening at physical therapy. Like nothing. Did, did it touch you there? Huh? Is he touching you? <laughs> yes. Uh, no, it, he, he does touch me. But I wrote my doctor and I said, I'm, I'm bothered by a few things here. Tell me if this is normal. He, I said, to begin with, they suggested that I see their chiropractor. Oh, mm. God. And I said, I know how you and I discussed chiropractic, and you felt that in this particular case it might do some harm if it's not in the proper hands, okay? And I said, okay, fine. Uh, and, and, and then I said, then they also said to me, listen, we have a doctor here who's an orthopedist, and he can give you a shot to help with the numbness. Now, what kind of shot can you give me to help me with the numbness of my foot that isn't going to make the foot more numb? A kick in the ass. You know? <laughs> and I told him about that. And he wrote back and he said, they're trying to upsell you at this place. And so uh, I said, well, I, there's this other place you wanted me to go. Send me another prescription and I'll go over there. And I called and canceled my next appointment at this therapist. 
because it just I, I just felt I was being. And then the last visit, hell, I think he spent thirty five minutes with me. And he had me oh, doing. That place sucks. And he had me doing a bunch of exercises, and he even had me get on a speed cycle, you know, and I which I do anyway. And I said, why am I doing this exercise? He had something he was doing. He says, well, that helps your legs. I said, yeah, but the problem is in my spine, okay? He said, well, we have to get the whole thing and shit. And I'm going, there's just something not right here, you know? <laughs> uh, this is not physical therapy like I know it or like it's supposed to be. I went to the Rolfer yesterday. Yeah, that sounds ridiculous. Yo, know, let's not change the subject yet, Phil. It's well, still, it, 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 it sort of is the subject. Oh, really? You went to the Rolfer. Yeah, I know what Rolfing is. I've been Rolfed. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's it's starting to work. It's been like the fourth or fifth session, and, uh, you know, it, I, I felt much more loose, and uh, it's very painful as they do it, but it, it seemed to help me. Yeah. Uh, hey, you know, Phil, I went to a Rolfer. I did the 10 session. And for, it, it, I was... All my joints were looser for about three months, and then everything just tightened up the way it was before. Uh, and then yeah. I was back to normal. I, I got a feeling that uh, I'm going to be a permanent resident in this guy's uh, office. <laughs> uh, I think the, the he, benefits are short. He, he's hoping for that. What, what's a rolfer? Uh, Ida Rolf well, they, uh, developed modern a... Modern-day torture. Uh, Ida Rolf was uh, a, uh, a woman that developed a system of massage that was very very deep she was also she was also known she was she was also known as she wolf of the ss <laughs> yeah but uh, <laughs> rolfing uh rolfing is uh, a very deep massage oh. and uh, they they stretch the muscles and uh, uh it's it, it's it's a little painful uh, and well, the well, ligaments and the tendons too, right? The, yeah, they get yeah. In oh, in everything. They get all the way down. I think there's five layers of muscle, and they get down to the bottom wow. layer. It wow. fucking hurts. I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, one of the problems that a lot of people have is that their lower back is sort of fused because they uh, there are these things called hip flexors, and those hip flexors, uh, as you age and you don't exercise. Uh, they they tighten up, and yeah. uh, causes a lot of problems beyond, uh, okay. you know. Yeah, uh, tight hip flexors will pull on your lower back and give you yeah. lower back pain. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that, that's why I would you know I, I like this rolfing uh, as much as it hurts. Well, when I got rolfed, I mean it, it was invigorating after I was through with it. But you know, I mean. Uh, it, 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 uh, well, I want something that's not going to make my feet stop hurting and, and feeling numb and things like that. That's what I want, you know. Uh, and I'm sure that there is, he's having, the doctor's having me to come back to look at me again and to yeah. discuss the whole matter as well. But he, he felt that uh, I, these guys were, you know, jerking me off. Well, since I went to a, the type of chiropractor that Ray recommended... Uh, which is uh, uh, the the one that he recommended was a Blair. Now Blair uh, is is a little bit. There's more manipulation there than uh, that my uh, Rolfing friend recommended, which was uh, Nuka. And uh, they you that's, almost that's think, what I do. Yeah, you almost think that they're not even moving anything, uh, and it's all based on uh, mathematics. But uh, they sure enough did. And, uh, you know, I saw it in the x-rays. So uh, it, it made a difference. And they feel that by adjusting the top two vertebra, that everything else will fall into line. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. And they rattle the bones and sing the song. No, they don't do any cracking, the nukas. Yeah, there's no cracking. Yeah. It's, it's kind of... My, my, my physical therapy does something very similar to what I, the new chiropractor Can I just say does. this? I, just I feel, think I'm going to stop going to the new <laughs> I think chiropractic is just mumbo jumbo. I really do. And I think that you're, you're, you're in great danger of doing more harm to yourself if you get a bad chiropractor. Now, the thing is, you, you don't know who's a good chiropractor and who's a bad chiropractor because they don't have the same kind of infrastructure that doctors do, you know? 
you know, doctors hide that infrastructure. You don't know uh, in a hospital how many people die a year because of sepsis and other... Well, we uh, know that. They, hmm? have, they have statistics on that. Uh, not not the way... It, it's not that easy to find. You're, no, you're trying to make a case here. The fact is we know about sepsis in hospitals, and they do everything they can do to prevent it, but it, it, it's one of those things that is a danger of going into the hospital. The, yeah. the Nuka chiropractors uh, can't hurt you like the, the standard like Palmer chiropractors right. where they twist your neck. They don't, the Nuka chiropractors don't do any of that stuff. Like, there's no twisting. There's no cracking. There's, yeah, it's, it's, just, just it's kind of just a uh, release, release of the... My, 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 my physical therapist does something very similar to what my Nuka chiropractor does. So I'm going to stop going to the chiropractor because I get more covered on the physical therapy. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, uh, From the insur insurance. Uh, yeah. No, uh, insurance covers physical therapy, but yeah. it doesn't cover chiropractic. Not very uh, much. Kaiser Mine covers it some of it. It doesn't cover any of it. I pay it all out of pocket. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, for the rolfing. Yeah, they're not going to pay for the rolfing and the chiropractor. Look, look, look at look yeah. at look at Scott. He's got a bemused look on his face, like. I know, I know, I agree he's with you. He's pain free. He's pain free. I agree with you. I just. Want, All right, what else can we talk about then? I just want my feet not to be numb anymore, and I thought that by going to a physical therapist, I'd be on my way to at least relieving the problem, and it only actually exacerbated it. Well, that's a bad physical therapist. Yeah. Well, this was the guy I I went to for my uh, meniscus, and and he helped with that. That kind of cleared oh. it. You know, it, it's pretty much gone. All right. You know, flares up every now and then, but for the most part, it's gone. And so I thought I'd go back to him. So I go back to him, but then he passes me off to some guy he works with named Harry, and Harry doesn't seem to know shit about anything. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. That's yeah. Uh, yesterday, yeah. the well, rolfer I just, I just, on my I, 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 Okay, we don't care about your rolfer. Uh, who just joined uh, us? It made, it made, a, it who made just, a big who, difference. Who just joined and us? Do you mind if I ask who just... Rolfer. Who? Steve. Who? Hey, it's, uh, it's Steve. Boy, you call from different phone numbers every time, don't you? No, this is about my new... It's much, I don't know why it's coming up with money like that. Is, I've had the same number for about two months now. Well, I don't know. I I, I, I tell my my system to look at uh, this number and say it's Steve, and it comes up with the phone number. Is it a two zero one and a seven number? I don't know. I just got rid of it. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, it should be right. It should be the same. I'm always on this phone now. But anyway, yeah, I would heard you about chiropractors. Oh, geez. And I got to tell you, um, I think they're mumbo jumbo too. Now they can help. But the problem is with, with chiropractors, when you go to one, that's what they, they just want you to just keep going and going and going and going because they can fix you, but they have to fix you and fix you every, you know, week well, or two Well, obviously, weeks or if they have or, to fix you and fix you and fix you, they're not fixing you. Exactly. And you know what you could do? Look, my back is all messed up there may be, I went to school. They may be relieving you, but they're not fixing you. It's short-term right. relief. When, when, right. When, when, when I went I, to, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say when I went to school, you know, my back is I'm, I'm doing all right, but my, you know, my shoulders are a little bit rounded, and the my neck and the upper part of my back are a little rounded and kind of hunched because I had that's, to lean over my because back. Because you ring bells at Notre doing. Dame. No. Yeah. But I do it, uh, it until I get somebody around that can do it for me. I just go, I use anything. Oh, I go on swings and park. I go on a, I'll go on a, um, you know, I'll go on a, uh, uh, you know, like a, a phone call, anything. I just went up to a pole. You just, you just put your back against it. You just bend as much as you, you can. You know, this you is going to be the most boring that. conversation we've ever had on this show. <laughs> get one of those get one of those foam rollers they're great that's yeah oh yeah, yeah i, I, could, I, I it, think uh, i have some equipment at home but i'm out a lot so uh, anyway uh, go ahead. Uh, it's, it's, and why are you out a lot because i don't want to be home because i live alone right now and i'm you know i miss a lot of the you know with this crap i've been through i just and i like it it's a nice night tonight i just like to yeah, yeah. be out okay. and walk right. and, okay. you know yeah that's like yeah. me yeah 
Yeah. I don't yeah. Ca- I really yeah. I really don't care, Steve. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I'm a really sympathetic person, but I, I really don't care, you know. Uh, okay. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> so have any of you guys seen Mars out there? Well, when it gets dark, I'm going to see it. Yeah. Can't wait. D- did you it's see? It's not dark yet. Well, uh, t- what was it? Is it tonight? Yeah, tonight is, it will be, I think, at its largest. It's its closest uh, to Earth, and it also is being, is reflecting off of the sun. Oh, and, cool! I got to get my and, camera out. Oh, tripod. cool! I, I'm, I'll go up. I'm going to go up. There's a nice hill by a park. I'm going to go up there. I'll tell you what's great there. if if you can, if you can get it is it's called um, yeah, uh, it's called sky, uh, night sky. And what oh, it, I have that. What app. it is is it's, it's this, this app, and you just hold it, it and it'll show you where Mars is. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. where you are Could right you now, I imagine. You? Look at a Google. That's probably Google. Like I have Google Earth. Can you do it with that? Or no, that's just no, Earth? No, no, that's no, Earth. That's Earth. Yeah. You know what this also? Yeah, has? There's, there's, a, there's a couple apps that will show you the the, the there. Mars, space, outer space, Mars, and where the planets and the stars and everything. Are. Mars and you tonight. You can just find it. Mars tonight is about there, and then it moves over this way, and uh, the uh, it's near. Look for it. It's near the moon usually. And you know what this thing also does? If I if I can plug in and say, show me the uh, the way the uh, universe looks from Mars, and then it will show me, like I'm on Mars, where Earth is. I mean, it's cool. It's a cool program. If anybody, and I think it's free. I don't think I paid for it. But are they, they sell- sell- I did. Are they selling any sell- Mars water on Amazon now? Since they discovered water there, maybe they're bottling it and, and selling it on Amazon. I don't get the joke. Hello, well, Kevin. That's because you don't listen to the news. Have you seen Mars? I tried to look at it last night, but didn't see it. Really? It was uh, probably too early uh, or too late. I don't know where, where it would be in the sky out where you guys are. Uh, yeah, I, it was the, the, the moon was just coming up. It was a little before midnight on my way home from San Jose. And, I couldn't see it. Well, I was so thrilled because oh, the, the, the other, other night, I, well, the first night I discovered it, uh, I went out there. Oh, Tony, Tony, you've got to ask to be recognized. Uh, he changed his phone or something. And uh, let me add him to my contacts. Then I'll send him a thing to be a contact. And then... Uh, uh, hey, how was the concert at San Jose Civic? Oh, uh, yeah, it was at the Performing Arts. It was, it was oh, really, really good. Arts. It was uh, excellent. Wait a minute. Hold on Thanks, a second. Man. I hold, wish I could have gone. On, hold Damn. on a second. Let me put... Oh. Here comes Tony. Yeah, he puts on a great show. Uh, uh, hold on a second. I, uh, Tony? Yeah, can you hear me? What, where are you, you, you... You're not calling to the... You can't. We can't put you on the air because you're on your own. You're not on a line that's been recognized as a contact. Oh. I'll go in my other room. Yeah, I think you should do that. Okie uh, uh, Okay, bye bye. <laughs> okay, let me resume the call with these guys. Well, now I can't resume the call with the guys. Here we go. There we. There go. must be a there must be a NASA app, right? That you could. I'm sure. Just yeah. go get Star uh, Star uh, Night Sky. It's called Night Sky. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I've, I, I've seen that. I've, I'll put that back on my phone, yeah. There are a few of them that are pretty good. Some of them you have to pay for. Yeah, I think Night Sky is free or very, very cheap. I got Star cool. Tracker. Yeah? That yeah. works pretty good. So if you hold that I up, it should show you where Mars is in the sky once, this, you know. It'll show you right now where it is in the sky, but you probably can't see it because of uh, the light pollution. I'm under the freeway again. Yeah, we're getting used to this walk now. Yeah, you're gonna know. Yeah. Is this okay to do? I mean, is this is this all right? Is this screwing up your show? No, no. Oh, okay. It's giving it a reason for existence. <laughs> I thought Phil did that. Oh yeah, yeah. I got another 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 one of those deals. Is this guy <laughs> who just hates you, Phil? Just absolutely fucking hate you that wrote on my Facebook page, 
a whole diatribe of why I don't have listeners. And the reason is... Phil did that? No, no. Oh. The reason, oh. The reason is... Uh, his name is uh, Arthur Vilkind. Uh and he he just says, uh, you know, nobody listens because of you, Phil. That's true. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm sure he's listening, and uh, probably uh, just so he can complain. You know, some people are real morons. <laughs> Well, and I, 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 you know, I defend you to I guys like this. That. No, I defend you because I, I think you're important to the show. You know, you're an important alternative voice, even though it's completely misinformed and full of shit. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, it's funny that you say that. I, I think that there's a, a new life being bred in, uh, uh, breathed into Trump supporters. It's going on in Florida right now that uh, he's able to swing uh, uh, a voter confidence towards different candidates, and uh, it's it's quite a well, it's quite a change allow, from allow yourself allow yourself to live with that delusion. I think How's actually that there's some candidates that don't want him showing up in their neighborhood because he may hurt their campaign. Uh, well, uh, it's rare. These no, are, it's not these rare. Ones in blue, it's not blue rare. areas. It's not rare. Uh, there there are uh, there are blue candidates that are afraid to offend Trump. Hey, because hey, he sure certainly did Roy Moore a lot of good, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, well, probably. Uh, uh, did he swing away from Roy Moore at the end? When it looked really dicey, yes. All right, well. Like he always did, does. Did you see the Roy Moore, uh, <laughs> Sasha Baron Cohen Yes, interview? yes. <laughs> With the pedophile detector? <laughs> yes. You know, I watched the that show. But, uh, is there more than the original show? Oh yeah, they're up to the third episode now. Oh, okay. I didn't know that there was more than one episode. See, the reason why uh, Showtime didn't really promote this thing in advance was because they didn't want to give anybody advance warning that this guy was going to show up somewhere, because he mm -hmm. hasn't done this for about oh about maybe ten years. He had to take that much time off so that when he came in with these new characters, nobody would see, you know, think it was Sasha Baron Cohen. But he had Roy Moore on the last one, and he's got a he's got this thing which is a per, a, a what was it a a pedophile detector. a pedophile detector detector. And he says, "See, I pointed at me, nothing happens." And then he waves it in front of Moore, and it goes <laughs> off. It goes nuts. Huh? <laughs> and he's like, did you borrow someone's coat today? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is that your coat? <laughs> he said, no. And finally, he, he just says, uh, I've had enough of this. I'm going. You know. <laughs> he, that was funny that he believed that it was real. <laughs> that he actually thought it was a real po a pedophile. And then, and then the second bit on the show was hilarious. The final bit wasn't very good, but the second bit where he gets this woman, to this guy to wear pussy pants. <laughs> which is a which is an unfair of underpants with a vagina built into it. <laughs> uh, very. Uh, I just I just may have to get Showtime just to watch that it's show. A very I funny it. show. It's a very funny. Did show. you see the one where he had the congressman run around yelling "nigger"? Yeah. That congressman, by the way, just he resigned. resigned. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, that, I don't feel good about that. That sucks. Well, <laughs> what do you mean you don't feel good about it? This guy is an well, asshole. Well, I mean, he got kind of manipulated into the whole thing. Well, you, <laughs> look, there are certain things you could never don't, manipulate don't me into dropping trowel, rubbing up against you, and yelling "nigger, nigger, nigger." Okay, yeah, that was, I'm yeah, sorry. That was weird. Yeah, you it, you couldn't get me to. Well, you got me to do it just now because I had to explain what was going on. Yeah, that was weird. I forgot about that part. Yeah, I mean, come on. These are not sympathetic people, you know, that he's going after. These are tr trash. Yeah. I can't, underst and, and where I can't was understand. I can't understand. What's that? Sorry. Who's that congressman, and where was he from? Uh, Georgia. Oh. Yeah. Uh, e e yes, what were you saying, uh, Ray? I, I can't understand how the minute he walks in with this horrible, like, plastic forehead... How they don't automatically think that there's something weird going on. That makeup is just horrible. 
I mean, it looks so yeah. fake. Well, uh, apparently. How did they not? Apparently. Yeah, the Israeli commando one looked pretty fake, too. Well, the commando. That's no, what I'm talking the, about. The Israeli commando yeah. one is. The others are okay, but that one's yeah, a little yeah, severe. Other. But yeah. he gets away with it. Yeah, he does somehow. You know, and uh, I and you got to give him props for his Ball. balls. Jeez, oh, Damn. Man. How does he not shit his... I mean, I'd be so nervous. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, and you know, like security guards with him. Oh, yeah. You know, because I tell you, if he tried to do shit like that to me, I'd throw him out on his ass. You would? Yeah. How well, do you he know probably you, yeah. does. How, how would you know it was, how would you know it was him? Clips. Yeah, I wonder how many he's had that up to. Oh, how would you know? How would you know? I mean, if you suspect that it somebody would, is punking you like that, uh, you know, I, I would just leave. Well, that's what I, somebody. That's what Roy. That's what Roy Moore did. Yeah. You know, but nevertheless, before he he left, he left kind of as though he was bothered because the detector was saying he was a pedophile. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it wasn't that he left because he was bothered by that, Sasha Baron Cohn, particularly. Yeah, yeah. You know, even Hillary Clinton. Uh, I, I watched a, a, a thing with her and uh, and Obama. The, you know, there was a few of them. I, you know, they, they should have just gotten up and left. Uh, did he do one with Obama? Yeah. When? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, he. I think on the first one uh, wasn't no. there an Obama? One? No. Oh. No, 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 that was years so, before. That was Obama. between two ferns. That was the one. Uh, well, that's it, an entirely different show. Uh, yeah, but it's the same kind of thing. No, it isn't the same kind of thing at all. Interview. No, because that, everybody you know, knows. Be, everybody does between two ferns knows they're on a on a comedy show. Okay. Yeah. So it is not. It's nowhere near the same as what Sasha Baron Cohen is pulling off. Which it's, is, it seemed to me that there was some similarity. No, there wasn't. What but is you're between never gonna, two ferns? Never, what is that? Uh, the, Zach Galifianakis? Galifianakis. Galifianakis. Oh, Zach Galifianakis. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and you, you you go get Obama because hey, he was great with um, with Seinfeld on Comedians Getting oh, Coffee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he was. Uh, 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 he's got a great sense of humor. He's a very, he uh, does. very, very hip guy. God, I, I miss yeah, him. Yeah, Seinf Seinfeld ate the apple. <laughs> I, I, I miss him. I miss Obama. Uh, I, I, it, there was some class going on in the White House at that time. Yeah, I, I hope he gets a good job doing comedy. Uh, he, that's where he belongs. He, he's not doing comedy. Oh, come on. He's producing television shows. Same thing. <laughs> Probably do very well. Yeah, there might be a position for him at uh, CBS. <laughs> well, that whole situation, to begin with, uh, there was a woman uh, that went You're to being overpowered by uh, yeah, background noise. Yeah, background noise. Uh, let, me, let me mute. Let me mute. Yeah. Uh, um, the, um, what was I going to say now? Um, oh, less, uh, less moon vest, but it was, uh, yes. The latest thing was this woman, who was the seventh woman, uh, came forward saying that she had reported him to the police department. Uh, and the police department investigated and decided not to pursue it because she was complaining about something that took place 30 years earlier. Uh, it, you know, I was talking to somebody last night about how can you view through a lens, a 30-year-old lens, using today's uh, uh, mores. Well, you, know, you just can't. I, I think somebody's got to stop Ronan Farrow. Because Ronan Farrow is now going out and trying to get anybody he can to keep his rep going, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I want to know what he's doing to vet these people. To, you know, because when you say, hey, Les Moonves uh, 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 costed women and, and didn't give him a job because blah, 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 uh, you, you're, you're doing something to somebody's career. Although if he left tomorrow, he'd be still a multi, multi millionaire. But you're still ruining somebody's career because you want the story. And when you when he wants the story so bad, the question is how much he vets it. Now, 
you know, I mean, uh, Moonves said, hey, when I was younger, I did a lot of things that I today am not happy about and would apologize for. But that was a long time ago. That's not now. And the fact is that most of these cases that are, uh, came up in this article were at least 20 years old. You know, I think one went back, uh, well, before he was married to Julie Chen, but that was the most recent one. But Ronan Farrell is, uh, you know, I, I really think that somebody has to, has to s somehow blunt him. Uh, by When's he going to attack uh, his stepfather there? Well, he already um, has. He already oh. has. Oh, really? It's part of his motivation in this whole thing. Hmm. His stepfather is, of course, Woody, Woody Allen. Yeah. Yeah. And his father is Frank Sinatra. Um, <laughs> at least that, that's the rumor. That's yeah. the rumor. Sure looks like him. And listen, if he isn't Frank Sinatra's father, I don't know who, whose father. He certainly isn't Woody Allen's kid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Doesn't yeah. have the nose. It doesn't have anything. Yeah. You know. When they do those overlays of Sinatra on his face, it's just like it looks like so incredibly yeah exact. Yeah. <clears throat> Why doesn't somebody pursue that? Why doesn't somebody pursue some stuff about Ronan Farrow for Christ's sake? You know. Anyway, I mean he's a, he's a pain in the ass. But anyway, I I want to ask you a question, everybody. Uh, today, Facebook comes out and announces that they have suspended 31 Facebook accounts. And so to, when are you going to get yours back? No, wait, hold on a second. Let me finish the story and not interrupt. <laughs> joke in. But the, let me finish the story, then you can do the joke. Well, then it's too late. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. I'm just, uh, anyway. Um, what was, now I forgot. You see, it they threw took, me off. Uh, Twenty-six accounts or thirty-one accounts. Thirty-one accounts least. off, and and because they found that they were suspected of being Russian and uh, trying to hack Facebook uh, to affect the election, upcoming election. Uh, and everybody on television is going, "Oh well, Facebook's finally coming up to the coming to the." combat on this whole thing you know they're really finally stepping up to the plate and i'm thinking that isn't anybody asking the question if maybe this is a whole fucking lie by facebook to look good to try and get the stock price back up again it could be could be yeah but nobody's asking that question they all That's want the to believe the st they all want to believe the story that the russians are hacking again you mean 31 accounts made all of this it, well, influence. that was another thing that i was thinking about and they yeah. don't know whether they were they were just suspect but yeah but they took them off now by the way interestingly enough all these social media organizations have been killing a lot of accounts uh i had forty five thousand uh twitter, twitter followers um, who I paid for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? Long time How ago. Now? Huh? How many do you have now? They cleared out all suspicious Twitter accounts. I am down to 9,000. Wow. <laughs> Overnight. <laughs> Overnight. Can, all can your you hookers are gone now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you ask for a refund? Oh, no, I'm still getting the hookers, by the way. Whenever I have an um, uh, oh, so opening, they're, 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 those are still good. Those hookers are still coming up and going, hey, hi, oh, I want to be good, a friend. Good. You know, and I go, nice tits, <laughs> fuck you, you know. Um, hey, Alex, I had that happen on my Instagram account, and I didn't even pay for it. And it was a big pain in the ass. I had to go through and delete every single one of them because all I was getting was pictures of Russian hookers on my Instagram yeah, page. And the question is, if they are so assiduous about this, why don't they protect us from that? Yeah, no yeah. shit. Well, that's uh, First Amendment. No, it's not First Amendment. It's harassment. You know, I, hacking, they you it's harassment. here's how I feel. When you come on to my Russian farmer, when, when you come, first when you come onto my Facebook page, it's like I'm inviting you into my home. Okay? You're now kind of on my property. Get off my fucking property. And, and but I mean, they're going around, you know, obliterating accounts like crazy. I want to know how many 
Facebook users exist now after they did the purging, or Twitter accounts existed now that they've purged? I think Twitter was at uh, 44,000, and Facebook, you, you just said it was 31 less. So they have how many no, billions? No, of no, 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 no. Facebook, I have 5,000, which is the most. No, 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 no. 30, 31 less accounts. They just deleted. Yeah. Or yeah. suspended. Well, no, but I mean, they also are suspending a lot of what they call dormant users and, you know. What they did is they never eliminated anybody. If somebody died... Their right. account still kept going. And the reason they didn't get rid of any of these was because they wanted uh, 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 as many uh, to be able to claim as many people as possible. But the fact didn't is. They have in more, in I, I, moratorium I, I, accounts? I would, I would like to know what Twitter's real following now is once they obliterated, because there were some people who had. Uh, I think Kim Kardashian got hit with like a million less people because yeah they 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 did say that number I heard it la a couple week about a week or two ago that there was a, a pretty big number that they original you know their total users numbers dropped to so and so and that's what dropped the stock number was it half or something it like was, that was I don't know if it was half but it was a significant number and it dropped their stock mm -hmm. well it dropped the Facebook stock. But I want no Twitter. To, oh, Twitter is Twitter. Well. Yeah, yeah. Twitter dropped because yeah, their stock took a shit uh, last uh, last week or a week before. Yeah. Which one uh, was Alex Jones on that got suspended? Facebook. Facebook. Okay. Facebook. Yeah. yeah. But, Wasn't it? But he's been suspended, which means they'll bring him back. Yeah, they'll give him his thirty days slap in the hand. For doing what? Hey, I had a friend that was promoting his book. Fake news! It's fake news. And, what do you think uh, it is? <laughs> and, in his, and in his book, uh, he, he had the cover of the book was a woman with her breasts pushed up against an opaque window, and uh, because you could sort of make out the areolas, they suspended him for a month. Those were real breasts, goddammit. And they were. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and stand up for Alex Jones. Good. I'm glad they took him off. Fuck it, you know. Yeah. He he deserves it, the motherfucker. Give him sixty days. Yeah, yeah. In uh, the pokey. No, the but pokey. so my 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 question is, I mean, Facebook with their compl with their claims of how assiduous they are now, culling out thirty one accounts. Uh, you know, I think the Russians probably have a little more than 31 intrusions into Facebook. I, ju I just... It's I, probably I, just a drop in the bucket. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but they said they're doing it, and they made a big deal out of it, and everybody was praising them on all these, uh, on MSNBC, oh, good for yeah, them. Yeah, Kristen finally... Nielsen was on Fox going, oh, see how good they're doing, and the whole bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the fact is, not one of these people was saying... How many here think it might be a fake that they're they're doing this to try and get the stock numbers back up again? Well, nobody said that. Nobody said that. Uh. Yeah. So, CBS stock went down when the Moonves thing happened. Right. Yeah. Has it gone up? I don't know if it's gone back up. I haven't, I haven't looked at it. Yeah. Don't rightly care. I don't have any stock in it. So. And just remember, as of today, if you. I'm going to say, just remember, as if anybody cares, as of today, you can listen. You uh, you have to use the radio.com app to stream the so-called CBS station. Oh yeah, they switched but, from live stream. They're they're not on tune. And I went on tune and I checked. You know what's there is uh, CNN. They put uh, a, a, a video too on on tune in for uh, CNN now. Tune in doesn't have video. If, they have it on my, my phone. Blind. Still... How could he tell? Uh, I'm not that blind. I'm <laughs> blind enough, but not that blind. I, I thought they were just audio. I mean, we, you know, we have our we have our channel on there. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, that's what I listen. I usually listen on TuneIn or I listen on Pro. I have to say if I want to record it. You know, it was only radio.com. Wait a minute, there's still radio.com. Yes, that's yeah. the only that's. That's it. That's the only way now to stream the CBS or the Entercom CBS well, you know radio. Who, you know who used to own uh, Radio.com Radio. and sold it? Is uh, what's his name from Shark Tank? Uh, Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban. Cuban. 
Really? That's how he made his billions, yeah. Yep. Uh, Yahoo bought Radio.com and from he and right. his partner for $5 billion, billion, I think it was. Wow. It was billion. I don't know how many it was. And but. he did that just before, just before the whole bottom dropped out of the, uh, do, uh, out of the dot-com business. Uh, yeah. And uh, made him a very wealthy man, you know. But I, did, I didn't know that Radio.com still existed or that anybody cared to use it. Yeah, I heard, I heard the same thing yesterday. You know what they're uh, doing here in New York? This is, this is fun. I just found out. Somebody mentioned it to me, I don't know, the other day. I think maybe on this show. Uh, Spectrum, which is the cable company in New York City, has been told by the state of New York to sell it. Char Charter Broadcasting, that owns uh, uh, Spectrum, has been told to sell Spectrum uh, because they have. Yes, I heard that. I heard that yesterday or over the weekend. Yeah, they they have to. Yeah, it's Spectrum. Like they did such a bad job. I guess. Well, they didn't live up to uh, to an agreement that was made when they took over from Time Warner. Uh, and there had been some problems with uh, them throttling down service and doing things like that. And not giving what they said they would deliver. Uh, I thought they could legally do that no. now with the uh, net neutrality uh, deal. Maybe they can, but they couldn't then. And they couldn't sell you. You know something? They can't throttle you down unless they tell you they're going to throttle you down. When I bought AT&T, when I got my AT&T service on my new phone, it said that I have unlimited. But it mm -hmm. said once I go past 22 megs a month or something like that, they can throttle yeah. me down. And it said yeah. that. You know, yeah. so as long as it says that, you're fine. But when you don't tell people, what they were doing is they were selling people a, a, a faster package. But in reality, they weren't getting the fact, faster package. In fact, so some of the people who had the slower package were getting faster speeds than the people who bought the higher packages. And that's so finally, the attorney general of the state of New York said, forget it. You uh, you negated the deal. You must sell Spectrum to whoever will buy it. So, back in the early days of DSL, that was a common practice by AT and T to throttle you down. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I would do is I I do a speed test, and then I'd call up AT and T and say, "Look, look what you did, and look what my numbers wait, are." Wait a minute, wait a minute. With a DSL, there was no reason yeah, well, for them to throttle you down because well, there was, they, there this was. was you this was 10 years ago. 8 kilobytes a second. <laughs> yeah, this is 10 or 12 years ago. And so what they would do, once I complained, all of a sudden my speed went back to where it was supposed to be. I had, for a while. I had DSL, and it never wavered. Well, it, That's they the were, reason you took DSL, it is because it was, it was steady. I, well, uh, I think they did it on purpose. It was, also, uh, it was also amazingly slow, I might add. But, you know. Yeah. Well, here comes it's, here comes. You'd watch your porn come in like this, <laughs> right? Yeah, I like my a, porn slow. Yeah, you jerk there's, off there's, like this. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tony. I am back. Yeah, I don't know. You called me on some phone that you know. Yeah, I was in my bedroom and I was trying to use the iPhone, but it wasn't working. Uh, I guess it worked. Oh, okay. You know, I, uh... My Sprint account, I'm supposed to have unlimited data. Yeah. And sometimes I, I use so much because I do this kind of thing. And mm -hmm. uh, then they send me this message. Because you've used so much data, you might notice a, your speed going down. And then it does go down. And then I call them and I say, hey, you told me I had unlimited data. And then suddenly within about an hour, it's back to normal. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Yeah. I've had to do that three times. Oh, really? Yeah. They, yeah, they think they're going to get away with it. Like, I bought it. There was no mention about throttling me when I used too much. There was right. no mention of that. Right. They do it after the fact. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, I, I a slight change of conversation uh, about voice tracking. I was talking to my friend last night who's a PD, and he said that there's a uh, station that he... Uh, uh, programs in the fire area of northern california and he said because of the voice tracking you would never know that there was a fire in that area 
And you know, he was well, kind of the problem with voice tracking is you'd never know there was a fire because the local station wouldn't be reporting it. Right. Well, he said, you know, why can't they just pick up the local TV news feed or something and and feed it in and and do some things that are sort of uh, localized? Why couldn't and they just said, do local programming? That would be nice. Yeah. Well, uh, he was he was disappointed by by that. That he says, you know, I'm listening, and uh, he says, you wouldn't know there was a fire, you know, and here they are, right in the middle of it. Yeah. Well, mean, I mean, that's I'm kind of confused. What do you mean, like he wouldn't know? Confused well, because, because because these stations are all programmed from elsewhere, and, oh, and there's nobody really? there. There's just a transmitter and and a big machine, you know. So when they say there's a fire, it could sound like you. You're no, like, like no, there's nothing no, wrong. no, they can't report the fire because they don't have any way of interrupting their broadcasting to talk about it. Right. In oh, by ways, the way, hi. I just want to say hi to Tony. Tony, I haven't heard you. In a, okay, a long okay, time. Steve. Let me finish my thought. Can I please, Steve? Yeah, well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Because it, the the point is, Tony, that when these yeah. stations voice track and when these stations run stuff off the satellite and so on, they're not serving the local. Uh, the local oh. people, and yeah. and uh, uh, so when there's a fire like this, no, they're not going on the air with warnings and things like that that they could do if they were live and if they did have somebody there. Yeah, and that's the problem with broadcasting today. A lot of local broadcasting just isn't local broadcasting any longer. That's right. So it's, it's sort of, uh, we were talking about that he was saying it's kind of the demise of radio. and uh, Well, he's part of doing it. Yeah, well, he is now. He's trying to make a living. You know, that's all that's left. Yeah, well, you know. It's like, and he's working a lot harder for a lot less money. Oh, of course. Of yeah. course. He's probably programming 20 different stations. Yeah, well, seven, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But... Uh, <clears throat> it, but uh, but that's a problem, you know, when, when you've got uh, a, a crisis in your area and these radio stations can't respond to it any longer. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, and so if you look at this fire that we're having, I mean, uh, the local, uh, the news, even the national TV news yeah. is showing all the same stuff and, uh, and reporting what's going on and having interviews, but uh, radio, nothing. Yeah. And the tr the problem is that radio is much more accessible than television. You yeah. know, if you're going to if you're going to give warnings to people or you're going to give people uh, advisories from the fire departments and so on, radio is far more accessible than television. Yeah. So but you can take it with you. Radio, yes. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh uh it, it's it's I think it's I think I think it's a perfect example of what has happened that is just so wrong, you know. Yeah. Uh, there was a local uh, TV station that the uh, TV commentators actually had to leave because of the fire threat. <laughs> you know, yeah. they said, "Hey, got to get out of here now." The, well, they yeah, were on the up air. Reading. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in Reading, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm driving up there next week to Oregon. I hope yeah. I hope we can get up there. Well, you may not be able to, you know. Uh, no, I, I think to... it's localized. You know, uh, I'm sure there's a way I, to get I through. Heard, I heard. Yeah, we, we, we talked to. Yeah. We talked to somebody who just did, and they didn't have any problems. So, I'm supposed yeah. to go to the Shakespeare Festival up there. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm going to uh, in Oregon, to, uh, Bend, Oregon. Where is it, uh, Eugene? Where is where is it? Uh, uh, oh shit! I'm not gonna forget this. It's right on the border there. I forget the name of the city. Is it Bend, Oregon, or is it... Um, no, it's near, no, no, it's more there west. Eugene? Uh, 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 what, Rinder's not good enough Oregon for you? Oregon Shakes. Huh? Uh, well, no. I know where it is, too. My neighbor lives there. Uh, How can I forget the name? God, I've said it a thousand times. Uh, I'll think of it in a minute. Yeah. Hey, welcome old. to my age. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. Well, this is getting a lot now. Uh, yeah, well, I just don't remember any. You know, I start, went on the air, uh, off the air for how many days? Three days or something. I go to turn everything on, and I'm having trouble remembering what to start when. 
you know. No, <laughs> checklist. Yeah, I, no, I don't like checklists because that means I really am getting old if I have to have a checklist oh, for a, crying out loud. A line. professional always uses a checklist. That's, you know, a, a pilot. Ashland. 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 I, Ashland. 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 Absolutely. Ashland, Oregon. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, what a name for a fire. Ashland. Yeah. Ashland. Right over the yeah. <laughs> Just above weed. Do you, do you, do you, yeah. get, do you get the, I can't remember. Does Texas get fires? Uh, nothing. Occasionally they get some in uh, uh, in the West Texas area, but they stay away from the city. Yeah. And uh, drilling rigs, I think. Uh, that guy Red Adair used to put fires out. I had some friends that came to visit yesterday who are in from uh, Tyler, Texas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I had to, I had to tell them that the thing I know most about Tyler is I have a friend who left his leg in Tyler. Really? He had an automobile accident <laughs> on the road oh, in Tyler. Took his, they took him to the hospital, amputated his leg, and uh, there it was buried. He, he went back, he asked them what they did with the leg, and they said, well, we put it in formaldehyde for a month, and then we bury it. And he said, why do you put it in formaldehyde for a month? And they said, to prevent phantom pains. Now, Wait, is that true? No, it's not. It's like an old wives' tale. But I these doctors, these rural doctors in Tyler at the time, believed you should do that. It was good common practice. Oh, wow. <laughs> Isn't how that come a they didn't country try, song? I think you how, how come they didn't try leeches? They may you know, have. Used the leeches once they made the cut. Yeah. Well, we've tried leeches. All but my the, legs are... We, I wish they could you know, the, only, the only thing leeches are good for is uh, inhabiting the White House. Anyway. <laughs> Bada boom. How's it cooking? Bada boom. Uh, so anyway, so um, where, where are we? Let's see here. Anything else happening in the news? I, I'm trying to. Of course, uh, you know, I, I, I've, been, I've been sleeping very well lately because yeah. our president told me after the Korean meeting, summit. the summit, that I could sleep easy now. Yeah, he did use the term. He said you can sleep easier because we have we have come to a determination of, you know, he's he's going to get rid of the nukes. He's going to get rid of the rockets and so on. Turns you out. You remember the you statement let me you finish, made about. Phil, will you let me <laughs> fucking finish? Oh. I thought you were finished. No, I wasn't finished. So I was sleeping very well, but now it seems as though that summit amounted to nothing because he's building the rockets again, and we don't know what he's doing with the nuclear stuff, but he, we, we have photographs that it looks like one of his plants is up and running again. So what did our president do for us? Said, should, should I still sleep? Uh, yes, and you know what? Uh, he's not blasting any of them off, number one. But number no. two... But he's still building them. He's still building them. Yeah, do you remember the statement you made about, well, uh, I don't believe that he's going to return the uh, war dead from the Korean War and and so forth. And you, you were very skeptical of that. Well, it, it seems as though they have mm -hmm. returned them. Mm -hmm. Now, do hopefully... Know, do we know what's in those boxes? Not verified yet. Not There's verified. probably cow bones in there. Yeah, right. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah, rocks in a box, you know. Uh, but I don't. I don't think that's actually the case. Uh, and you I know, and he's not. going through the effort of doing it. Uh, so. So that's what we got out of the trip: some bones. Well, yeah, and and don't you think the closure to these soup. families is important? What? Wait a minute. Wasn't that? Are any of the families still alive? Oh, absolutely. Matter of fact, there was a, a, a woman and a, and a man both uh, lost their fathers uh, in, a, in the action. Mm -hmm. and, oh, I guess so, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I would think they want closure. Now, Alex said yeah. that uh, he doesn't have any relatives left, and so he doesn't care. But you know what? If it was his father, and he had the chance to grow up and know his father. Some of these people didn't, and all they have is possibly... <laughs> and all they have are these but fucking bones how many diversion. years later? Not a diversion. Yes, it's, it is, because that's that... not why Trump went there. He went there to get, talk about the 
the nuclear stuff. And then now you're bringing up fucking bones, man. It, Who gives a, a shit about the fucking bones? Hey, Ray, there was a number of things that came out of this. And uh, you know, what's so wrong yeah, with... Yeah, but the important uh, stuff as a, that was supposed to... The important stuff There's that was supposed to... There's nothing wrong with it, but that wasn't his real reason for going over you're, there. You're exactly right, it yes. Was, it was part of the... Oh, my God. The, and also, you know, uh, Pompeo got the American... Uh, hostages that were being held in North Korea, and he didn't have to pay a dime. Obama gave the Iranians $175 billion for their deal. Uh, Trump got the bones, and he got the, uh, the hostages. He didn't have to pay a dime. Even Reagan had to pay for hostages with the Iranians. And uh, Trump did it, and uh, he, he did it through negotiation. Hmm. He's such a deal maker. He is excellent. How much did it cost for him to go over there? Uh, thirty-nine ninety-five Ryanair. Who's going to pay for the did wall? Did he really come back with the bones? He did. He got Mexicans. Them. Well, they they've gotten the uh, remains from uh, they think from uh, several. I, I don't think he they could got have gave them anybody. There's eight thousand missing. Well, uh, yeah, I saw the boxes. That, they're, yeah. they're still got to be verified, and that can take a long time. There are about thirty boxes that came back. So, out of eight thousand, that's sure a sure a large <laughs> amount. Phil. I don't want to make it. Eight thousand missing in action, and uh, you know, and and possibly dead. So they don't they don't know. Do they know so he's the bone retrieving president. Missing in action <laughs> and possibly dead. Now, let me let me try and figure this one out. If they never came back. Well, there how was are they uh, some that, How are they missing? They, uh, they there, must be there dead. Was, uh, there was one guy interviewed where they got reports uh, back in the days of, uh, uh, I don't remember which Russian president uh, opened up the records from uh, Berlin, East Berlin. Uh, not, not, excuse me, not East Berlin. They opened up some records and they thought that his father was taken to a, a prison camp in Russia. Uh, from uh, North Korea. And uh, I think it might have been Yeltsin that uh, supplied some documents that uh, gave them that indication. So mm -hmm. they think that there's even a possibility, you know, he may be dead now, but there was a possibility he was alive for a long time. Cool. Uh, ho hum. Bone, the Bone President. Yeah, the, the bone, bone retriever. President Bones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, if, it, if it was your father or grandfather's <laughs> bones, you'd want them. You'd want no, that. No, that's not the fucking. You know point. something? I mean, it's I, like, I, I don't know that I exactly agree with you, Phil. That I don't know that I, after all that amount of time, would want those fucking bones back. Doesn't you know? You wouldn't them, them bones. Them. No. You know? No, I wouldn't. I really, I because I would have lived all my life without that father. Uh, and and suddenly to be able to say, well, I have his bones and now I can bury him here, it doesn't really give any. It doesn't. It doesn't resolve the problem that you went all that time without a father. Well, it uh, it may not to you, but it, it seems that that's the way it is for a number of other people, that it does resolve uh, uh, these things. So you know, I mean, you're entitled to your opinion. And how and, many uh, of those? How many but at of those least collusion is not a crime. And now you're also talking about hey, <laughs> the, there's this uh, there's this guy uh, who um, uh, you know it, uh, who whose father uh, died in Korea and he's getting his bones back. How many of those are there exactly? Of all those bones coming back, how many families who were alive at the time? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say it's all very. All you very, need is I one. would say it's a very small <laughs> amount. What? All you need is one. Well, all you need is one. Yeah, yeah. How much money did we pay to do that? We didn't pay the North Koreans a dime. Oh, really? Why would they hold it? Did we pay? Did we pay for his hotel room in uh, in uh, Pyongyang or wherever? Wherever that that was. His credit card did, that's because his credit. Uh, 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 Kim Jong Un's credit card what didn't go through. He didn't pay his bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you, you bring up all these. You bring up all these. You bring up to make an argument. You bring up all these hypotheticals. Oh, uh, I'm bringing up hypotheticals. Yes. Uh, you, okay. 
you, you're you're fighting the argument oh, by saying oh, you don't yeah, give this, a this, shit. This, this poor, these poor kids whose fathers died. Do you know how old they are now? And if they are still yeah, alive, how 60s. old they are? No, 70s. They're my age. 70s. Yeah, well, they're, they're my, my age. They're my or, age. Or a few years older. Uh, you know, was kid, kid was six months old or a year old in 1953. I was born in 54. Oh, well, then, then you can't possibly right. miss your father because you don't remember him. Yeah, I don't remember my mother. Well, they right? have, uh, as far as a memory, is a picture and a... And, and a uh, yeah, but, and that, but that, that's... And now you have to bury him all over again. Yeah, you have to go through that grief all over again. I don't want to have to pay for a funeral. It's <laughs> no it's offense, but At this point, it's called closure. Yeah. Boy, I'm I'm glad to hear you're such a humanist now. Hey, I think Alex is right I, because I, when I they had closure on it already, Alex, you think? I don't even yeah. believe in plastic straws, you know. Uh, so uh, not only am I a humanist, I'm also an well, environmentalist. Phil, let me let me tell you that uh, you may not believe in pr plastic straws, Phil, but they do exist. So you anyway, know, I have. Uh, <laughs> I have a, a, a thing of plastic stirrers that I bought about 10 years ago at yeah. Costco. And I still have about three quarters of the 12,000 plastic stirrers uh, mm -hmm. at my store. And I said today, you know, I said, I wonder if I should dump them and get wood stirrers. And then I said, you know, if I dump them, they may end up in the ocean. Well, you see, the so, thing is, the thing is, you don't realize this, uh, in the words of my old friend uh, David Feldman, uh, 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 plastic uh, is biodegradable. It's just you're impatient. You know, I have seen, I have seen photos of sea life that have oh boy, here birds. we go, here we so, go. Here's a, one of his swimming deals now. Yeah, uh, but uh, these uh, birds, an their stomachs on and I'm a hero. are so full of plastic pieces that mm -hmm. they That's eat fake at the start. Fake news. No, it's not fake, fake news. news. Hey, this is environmental shit. You know, you would think that you libs would be behind this, That's but, uh, you know, you would pick any position as long as it's not Trump. So, and, you know, and I'm not saying that Trump agrees with uh, this plastic straw stuff, but if you've ever seen a bird di uh, dissected and they open up their stomach and it's totally packed with uh, bright colored plastic pieces uh, and they starve to death, uh, you, you know, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to use a plastic uh, straw. The bird's again. fault for eating the plastic. Well, well I'm, I'm sorry, it's I'm sorry Phil, but this may covered. come as a big shock to you, but I never use plastic utensils. Oh, I don't no, 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 no. You still, you still eat with your fingers. And I, and I never use plastic stirs for coffee. Oh, I do sometimes. That's good. What do you do? You use your fingers? I, just yes, the I do. I use my finger. I use, actually, yeah. you know what I use? I use my glasses. Yeah. 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 Well, I use a spoon, you know, but uh, I, I did buy on. these first. Huh? I use my phone. What do you... <laughs> uh, you use your... You use your I, I, you use, I, I have a stupid, a ridiculous question. Yes. Sort of. Does anybody, if you go to Nathan's and get the french fries, does anybody really use those, those bread oh, kits for things? Because I don't. For the french fries? I don't. Yeah, with the French fries. Sometimes you mean the little prong things that they have? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 you know, every so often, if I really don't want to get my hands... Is that for up, eating French them. fries? Are people that afraid of no, French fries? No, usually, I, usually I don't. Usually I don't. But are, are, people, <laughs> are people afraid sometimes of French fries? No, but sometimes, you know what, though? Sometimes what they're good for is if they, you get them and they're really hot, you just poke them with that and they'll cool off fast. You know. So. Well, that's good you to know, know. One more thing about yeah. straws. I uh, believe in drinking a drink like a man. I don't use a straw. Women use straws. I, I use grab straw. the glass, I put it up to my lips, and I... And that's I what I like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know? Yeah. I'm, drinking a, I'm not one of these pansy liberals that uses a straw, you know, and then kills the birds. I'm drinking a crappy... Whatever, uh, happened, whatever, happened, whatever happened to paper straws when I was a kid? That's all we had were paper straws. There was no they such thing as a... more. Huh? These guys are... Uh, a paper straw, I think, costs uh, two, uh, a two cents or a cent and a half. And a plastic straw, I think, is a half a cent. And that's... Uh, oh, yeah. Businesses are claiming that uh, it costs too much. And people are saying that plastic straws uh, break down before the drink is completed. 
well, just put the drink up to your mouth and put your head back. You know? Yeah, exactly. You know, I use straws sometimes when I'm out, but at home I'd never, you know, unless I'm sick, you know, in bed or something. If I'm in a hospital, then you, you know, straw. But I'm yeah. drinking this crappy grape soda right now. I'm drinking it right out of a can. Are you, uh, uh, are you black? <laughs> no. Black people. Oh, are not no, not that's people. orange. I was so. I got to, I, at one point. I got to like grape soda, and somebody said, "Are you black?" And I said, "Of course not." And he said, "Because black people love grape soda." Now, I didn't know that. They do, but they is, they do, but they especially love orange. Maybe Jack yeah. Bishop is out there. Maybe he can tell us of black people. <laughs> you know, like, you know, it's, it's funny <laughs> that at these uh, black um, uh, barbecue places. They they sell like strawberry soda and, and all, all all of those kinds of flavors. Uh, you know, forget root beer. You know, I think you know what I like. I like birch, and you can't find it in a lot of places. I like birch ahead, too, Alex. John Birch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Alex. You were going to say something? No. Alex. <laughs> no. Hey, Alex. I interrupt like, so wait, much. Wait, wait, hold on a second. Ray has something he wants to say. Yes, Ray. Oh, I was I was going to ask you, Alex, if you would like to speak. Oh, no. <laughs> well, next he'll be sitting up and begging, as well as speaking. And can you? <laughs> I miss Feldo. Yeah, well, I don't. So you know. Oh. <laughs> no, I mean, he was funny. He was funny. He was. He was very funny at one point. He, you know. Yeah. But he became a miserable human being. So you know. Oh, okay. Didn't he get his own podcast? Yeah, he's got a podcast. So does everybody. Oh. That's the reason why I don't know why I do this. Because there's so many fucking podcasts in the world. It's like spitting in the fucking ocean. But yours is free. So are the Not other the ones. <laughs> Hey, I'm interviewing one of the actors on Stranger Things on my podcast uh, this uh, Thursday. Really? Who? Yeah. Who? Uh, one of the mom. One of the moms of the kids. <laughs> uh, she, one of the moms of one of the kids. I don't have, know which one. Stranger Things. Does she? Yeah. Ha does she have a big role, or is it just? Yeah, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. She, she's on. She's on like every other show, I'd say, for a scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know I've never yeah. been able to get through that show? I loved it. Really? I liked it. You liked it? I liked it too. Really? Yeah. I, I, well, I, I probably should cute. try it. You know, they're not doing another series of them until next year. So uh, I may as well catch up now. You know, It gets better in the second season. The kids are better actors. Everything's the kids have upped their game just from experience. It gets, it's much better. It's just when I watched it, all I said was, "This looks like a cheap version of ET." Yeah, they did. It seemed like they stole clips from everything. Can I? Can I ask you? I uh, over the weekend, I uh, went to IMDb and I looked up Peter Falk, and I was looking to see if I could recognize that movie that you were talking about, mm -hmm. and I couldn't distinguish which one it was. Tune, What's tune, the name of tune it? Tune in tomorrow. Tune in to okay. I'll write it down. With Keanu Reeves and Barbara Hershey. Oh, yeah, you like that one. Huh? You like, you, I remember that interview. That was one of the, uh, you, you enjoyed that interview when you interviewed her. Remember, I'm serious? Yeah. 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 So, nice. Anyway, huh. let me see here. We have, uh, well, we have about 12 minutes left. Is there anything else we can bring up that will get Phil crazy? I would have still think of Rudy Giuliani. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, that lying sack of shit. <laughs> He's doing a good job. Well, no. He, oh my wait god. A minute, wait a minute. Oh, here, here. Yes. This is a good job. The good job is. Let's see here. The president said there's no collusion, and then Rudy Giuliani said collusion isn't a crime. Well, then right. if the, he didn't commit collusion. Why are you even saying collusion isn't a crime? And by the way, that's what, it's, that's what everybody's no, accusing him of. No, collusion itself is not a crime. Conspiracy is a crime, and collusion is a conspiracy. Um, um, no, there's nothing in the uh, in the uh, penal all, all code. All I'm or saying in the code. is is that another word for collusion is conspiracy, but conspiracy is illegal under the yeah, law. Yeah, what dictionary are you? Yeah. 
I'm saying that, you know, a, a consp what they're looking at is conspiracy, not collusion. He, what conspiracy could he have had by having business deals prior to his election? It's not business deals. The whole thing was about whether or not he was, he was uh, working with them to do something with against the, Hillary, which is uh, yeah. While he was illegal. while he was running for Hillary president, haven't you been paying? A, haven't you Trump. haven't you been paying attention to well, this that was thing, never, Phil? Yeah. Well, that's because Hillary washed thirty thousand emails and, and destroyed well, wait, her. Wait, 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 wait. Let's not get back to the thirty thousand emails because she isn't president. It doesn't matter. That's way. Uh, that's way that if 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 Donald Trump okay, at Hillary. all had knowledge that the that the facts were being jimmied by the Russians in his favor, and that he knew it and went along with it, that is conspiracy. Okay, well, and that is a that is a national crime. It's almost a year. Do you think that if they could have proved any of that, that they wouldn't have tried to expose it already? That Mueller is sitting around collecting a check and doing nothing? How, how long did He's they? How long? How long, how long was the case being? Clothes. How long was the case being built against Clinton? Uh, about a year. But no, uh, not a year. No, Manafort. it was more like two years, 21, if I'm not mistaken. Manafort Three years? Oh, hey, listen to me, one. Phil. Phil, listen what? to me. I'm just Clinton, it was three years before they, uh, am I right, Scott? You said three years? I, I believe it was three or four, yeah. Three years before they came up with the goods Monica. against him. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he, and, you know, they're trying to find something on Trump. There's nothing there. They already got it. They, it was on uh, <clears throat> Lawrence O'Donnell. Nothing. Tonight. Yeah, Lawrence O'Donnell. You know, that is, uh, you say Lawrence O'Donnell, I say Alex Jones. And well, I, and you have Lawrence the O'Donnell, they, they, have a, they have the email trail now that Trump knew before he talked to Comey, before he fired Comey, that uh, there was a, a, a meeting with the uh, Russians. He said he didn't, yeah, he didn't know. It can't it can't be obstruction if he didn't know, but he knew they already got him dead to rights. It's nah, over. No. Game over, it's, man. Game over. They, we win. He's gone. <laughs> if, they, <laughs> if they had him dead to rights, we'd hear more than a guy like Lawrence O'Donnell. Oh, it's coming. no. They have to have overwhelming evidence, and that's what they're trying to do. Is yeah, like, because they don't have any. Oh, have, have, yes, they. Do. Mueller is a very Trump's honest. Us his own stuff. Mueller is a very <laughs> honest, prudent. And thorough person, uh, yeah. he is not. He's it, and it, all due credit to him. With all the berating that he has gotten at the hands of Donald Trump, he has not said a word. You yeah. know, and that's why and, you haven't heard anything, Phil. Yeah, he hasn't well, said anything. Because he's still getting his check. Oh, well, but he's he's, he's, al he's already convicted. How many? He's already convicted a whole bunch of. Uh, yes, yeah, twelve Russian guys in absentia. No, wait a minute. No, no, no they're American Americans too. who have pleaded guilty to the charges that have been thrown against them. And because have no, you been watching guilty. the news? They and have you not heard about a guy named Cohn? Have you not heard about Cohn, a guy who is going to flip on the president and place oh, yeah, him and place him, and, and, place him those, uh, and place him in those and place him in those meetings? Heard the tape. Yeah, the if tape. Cohn was tape if you listen to it. Oh, uh, as Trump saying, get a corporation and pay with a Phil, check. Shut the fuck up. I no. don't. Want to, I, I don't. I went through this right. once with the Beatles. I don't he want to go through cash. this with this recording. <laughs> no. Uh, Cohn said cash. Cohn said cash. Yeah. And, and Giuliani <laughs> says that. Oh that he my God, Phil! You and are such a sucker. Tell me, yeah. tell me, <laughs> tell me, Phil. Is is Giuliani not one of the creepiest human beings on the planet? <laughs> Giuliani's a stand-up guy. He looks he's like a oh, fucking. No, I think he's a. I think he's a. What fucking do you mean? He's bum. a hunched. He's a hunched that. over That's guy, true. not a stand-up guy. And he's he, he mayor. looks like a not fucking one. vampire. <laughs> he's America's <laughs> asshole. He was your mayor. I like I like Koch and Bloomberg. And yeah. All right. Let's Koch see. likes Giuliani. Koch, uh, Koch was is very tough. pro Giuliani uh, and very pro Bush. You know. I'm pro Bush myself. Yeah, we all oh, like Bush. Oh, say can <laughs> you see? Well, just the end of the book. No, no, my name isn't. <laughs> no, ended. my name isn't Jose. <laughs> we, 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 we end our yeah. the broadcasting we, evening. We end our <laughs> we end our broadcasting day today. Need some static. 
<laughs> inviting you to join us again tomorrow morning when Channel 2 <laughs> signs back on the air. <laughs> I have to go back to the flagging for this. You remember that? What, uh, remember what the, when you, that was when they used to that, actually go off the air for like three hours? You couldn't figure out yeah, why yeah. they could play a movie and, they, and not. They put a picture. They put a picture of an Indian on the yeah, on the no, uh, that channel. Was, that the was test the, pattern. You know, that yeah. is the test yeah. pattern, and the reason. Oh yeah, the that's Indi right. The we, reason yeah, the no, Indian. Yeah. You that's you, you learn very, something, Phil? Would decent. you like me to teach you something? What's that? Because you talk so much, you never hear when other people are talking. Well, that's because you're trying you, to talk over me you, like this you know, usual talk show host. Do you know why the Indian was there? <laughs> no, why? That was part of the test pattern. That was part of being able to see if your if your resolution was decent enough. And do you know yeah. what those little lines going out were? Oh, right. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, that they also, could have used someone that was uh, more PC than the Indian. No, the, you know? the Indian was a fine picture, and and once they got rid of the Indian, we went to color bars. Okay, so yeah, you know that was it. But yeah, the, but you know, the, you know, they they won't even let you have the Redskins as a as a sports team, let alone an Indian on a test pattern. You know. Oh boy, you're really belaboring shit tonight. You really are. <laughs> Good God! Wow. It's still the Washington Redskins. <sighs> yeah, still yes. Washington. to me it is. Yeah. It's, it, they didn't change the, the name, did they? Uh, I, no, they, and they call themselves the Pocahontas now. And the Atlanta Braves. <laughs> the Atlanta Braves. Uh, I, yeah. The Cleveland Indians, though. What, what's going on with that? that? That's the Browns, I think. They changed. Yeah, the that's the Browns. Is yeah. It, yeah, that's the Browns, I think. Yeah. And yeah. Then, How about uh, the Fighting huh? Irish? Well, that's different. <laughs> they're they don't know, their skin's white, so it's okay. Yeah. You can make fun of them. They're they're open fodder. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, how about the dangerous day goes? No. Yeah. Scott, <laughs> Scott was shaking his head at the Cleveland Browns. What? Why? The, the the Cleveland Browns are named for Paul Brown, I believe. I'm not sure, but but the Cleveland Indians they they're still the Indians, but they can't use that. Goofy looking chief symbol they had. Yeah, Chief Wahoo or whatever. Right, his name right. Is. And, and, and Atlanta, yeah. they can't do They have Gandhi on there now. The tomahawk. The tomahawk. Chop. The no, the tomahawk chop was the uh, was the Atlanta. Washington Redskins. No, no, it was Atlanta. Florida Seminoles. Seminoles. Did, oh, okay, that was a college. Florida State, team. I believe. Florida State. Yeah. Tallahassee. Several teams use it. What about Remember, the Tampa I'm... Bay Buccaneers? I mean, that's not fair to pirates. I know it's not fair to pirates, damn it. Really? Yeah, they could be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those poor Somalis, they're starving, and all they do is take over a few ships and, and you know. Uh, yeah, that's an anti Somali team. Yeah. Yeah. And they're... You remember, I'm sure you, you remember the, uh, when it was the idea of the Milwaukee Braves. Yeah. And then in no. 60. At about 70, 70, 68, they moved to Atlanta and went to Ivan Allen, was the mayor. He integrated uh, Atlanta, and it, Atlanta became a big hub, you know. Where did they get the name the New York Mets? Where, where did Metropolitan. Metropolitan. Oh, Metropolitan, oh, Metropolitan. yes. Oh, yeah. Metropolitan area, yeah. I used to not. You're I from New York, and you don't know that? Time, but, yeah. You're from New no, York? I had no idea. No, Why? that's what it is. Met for short for metropolitan. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, so they're metrosexual, maybe. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember when they were so horrible in the seventies. Thank and I God, had a the jacket. show only has one minute left. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it's not important. So. Yeah. Well, uh, what if, can if we do with a minute? That's by, interesting. By the way, Ray, it's dark out there. there. Can you see Mars? Oh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, let me see what's going on. I checked Where's earlier. Going? I saw it, Alex. It's great. It? And it's red. Hey, it, it's red, like, isn't uh, it? Paitlin. It's I red. I'm trying to find the moon. My wife and daughter out to see it, too. And it's you guys like uh, Will you let me say something, Phil? I right. can see it from my part. <laughs> did, what, did, it, did it look red to you? Uh, yes, it did. Yes. It's and amazing. I use binoculars. I, I, it's awesome when you use binoculars. I've done that. Oh, uh, there's no moon yet. Well, it, it comes before the moon, oddly enough. It, it the moon comes oh. right after it. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll have to get my my star walker. But tonight it is probably out. the biggest it will be, and then it goes 
into a retrograde, and look, it will hey, it'll only be this yeah. way again but, in another 15 look, look years. Look to the east, a little bit south. East? Okay. Yeah. Moon's okay. coming out late right now. for us. I'm, oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. It's clouding up here. Oh, whoa. I see something. Oh, no, it's an airplane. Well, you see, you'll, you'll, you'll see Jupiter. Jupiter is pretty bright, okay. and Venus is very bright. But then you will see this other one that's bright, and it also looks red. Right, right. It's really smart. Dark. Yeah. So uh, there are a lot of airplanes out. They must be look, trying to look at it. There's a bunch <laughs> of private planes flying around. Well, at first, I'm serious. At first, I, I thought right Mars was airport. a plane, and then I said, that thing isn't moving. You know, and and uh, hey. I woke girlfriend up and I said, look. And she said, what? And I said, Mars. And she went, wow. I said, it's not going to be like that for another 15 years. We're not going to be alive to see it that way. Anyway, hey, listen, we got to go. Uh, thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. We appreciate it. Uh, Ray, yeah. thank you for the walk. Uh, thank you, Kevin, <laughs> as always. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Steve. And, of course, thank you. No, to, Phil, tomorrow. Uh, okay, that's good. Uh, <laughs> feel free. All right. I feel free to feel free. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, 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 all of you, uh, give a big wave goodbye here, to our night. audience. Okay. Night. Okay. Good night and have a nice night, everybody. Thank you. That's our citizens panel for tonight. I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, next is uh, Jack Bishop. He'll be here with the intersection, and that will be closely followed by a program called Connections at one o'clock Eastern daylight time tomorrow night at uh 8 30 it's the arena with the franchise mc that's our sports show at 9 30 damian uh, chaplin will be here with the, the exchange and then i'll see you again tomorrow night at 10 o'clock eastern daylight time same time same station in life in the meantime if you see her tell her i love her okay bye everybody <laughs>